How do you support children with special needs who find transfer to secondary school too difficult? This program explores an approach that Shubury Ness High School in South End are developing. It's stopping children becoming disaffected long term and it's helping them to thrive. I think four years ago we were very aware that we had, we were failing a number of youngsters in our school. There were youngsters who just were not accessing the curriculum, even with the help of a learning assistant. And I would say that we, we really were finding a lot of behaviour problems, a lot of poor attendance and so on. They took a dramatic step and established the achievement groups. Inspired by the primary system, it's for those children who can't cope with secondary school. It's designed to improve confidence, learning and behaviour in a nurturing environment until they are ready to join the mainstream. We decided that primary model was one that we would try to emulate in our large secondary school. Um, and certainly we would look at reducing class size and increasing the amount of learning support in the classroom. While you're finishing that, I'm going to write up a hand So they employed two primary school teachers to lead the group. Deborah Hughes leads the unit. In many respects, we are delivering a primary model in secondary school. Um, by that, I mean that we, the children can touch base in one class. They have their own form tutors. They all go to their separate form tutors. But most, all their core lessons, apart from science, are in the achievement group classes. Swiftly and smoothly. When um, children are identified in year six, we work as a team with the um, feeder schools, the SENCOs, the class teachers, deputy heads, along with us, we'll identify children who we feel fit the criteria, which is initially to be working below level three in at least two areas, usually English and maths. Um, they also need to, if, if they are working at level three, but are not fulfilling their potential because of emotional um, or emotional problems or some kind of syndrome or anything that may have um, stopped their learning, then we will, we will, we will, will admit them um, until they're ready to be reintegrated. Two times six equals 12. So, for example, if we're at 12, they'll say two times six. A lot of the curriculum that we teach goes right back to the basics that are learnt in infant and junior school. And I really feel that a secondary practitioner would not be able to provide the children with the, with the basic learning that they, they really need. Even things like going back to learning the alphabet and learning to count and very, very simple things like that. We have children with delayed learning that's non-specific. We have several syndromes, including Asperger's. Asperger's, um, Tourette's syndrome, and we have several ADHD children. We have children with oppositional defiance disorder, disruptive behaviour disorder, and a whole range of other um, non-specific problems that, that stop these children um, accessing mainstream curriculum. So how do they meet these children's needs? The curriculum itself in terms of core and foundation subjects is differentiated by backtracking to key stage two objectives to the level that they need to be at. The level of activities can be quite challenging for the children, but they are very creative. Um, displays, very primary orientated in our rooms, that stands out, big colourful displays, washing lines, you know, all children's work is celebrated. One. So you, you've got a choice, you're going to go on the red or the black? I use a lot of concrete resources with the children, um, so they've got the opportunity to have a hands-on approach, particularly with things like maths, which is often quite abstract grasp for these children um, using things like multi-link and shapes and uh, plastic money. I mean it seems a little bit patronising to say you know these children are 12 years old and we're going back to very simple things like this but this is really what they need that they don't actually realise they're learning. If they're playing snap with, with words with a particular letter sound or they're playing, um, we've got fraction card games, uh, dominoes, uh, bingo. 20. And 11. They don't actually realise they're having a maths oh. lesson, but in fact they're, they're learning absolutely loads. 36. 
having things like a times table tape. It's, it is a bit of a gimmick, but they, that's a bit more interesting to the children to be singing along with the tape rather than saying, right, we're going to you know, sit down and learn your six times table now. And we try to mix this up all the time. So children who have different preferences for learning are, ac are able to access all the types of learning. We need to try and set ourselves some targets. Another important part of their work is the development of self-awareness using primary strategies such as circle time. How we can help you achieve these targets will help you to get up into progress. Or if you uh, try and really stay calm and if you just pay attention and don't uh, get distracted from the things going on around you. Do you want? I would have told you from my behaviour. Right. You've got to stop talk, calling the teachers names and now stop, stop calling you new names. What names have I called the teachers? <laughs> teaches them the social skills of taking turns and waiting for other people to, you know, to have their say and listening and, you know, sharing opinions and that it doesn't matter if they disagree as long as they respect one another. Last one then about Jake to Chris, thank you. Okay. Well, what you've got to do is you've just got to just sit down, calm down and go like this on the table. That's what Miss Nubber told me to do. We also work on self-esteem and self-confidence and do lots of things to promote them, promote them and themselves and make them feel good about themselves. We don't dwell on the negative, we try to reinforce all the positive stuff. Can I, can I say something to Jake? Hold on to that thought. I know... Look at me when I'm speaking to you. Oh, what? I know that you're a really intelligent young man. And that's not embarrassing, that's something to be proud of. Cool, I've been too much going through my evils. <laughs> and you are capable of doing extremely well. There's no need to be embarrassed, because it's brilliant. You need to keep a lid on your behaviour to take advantage of everything that you've got up in your head. The purpose of the star chart is to reinforce good behaviour and to reward the children who do good work, behave well, attend, complete their homework, complete their classwork on time consistently throughout the week. And they're all recorded on the board, so it's a visual reminder of all the children of who's working well and who isn't. We've had a whole range of um, behaviour issues, ranging from um, throwing chairs and tables um, to having the screaming abdaps, really. That I've had children walk out of my classroom and hurl themselves around corridors because they become so frustrated. We have to stop a game for you, Jake. Blame me, blame me, blame me, don't you? Cool. Anything else comes out of your mouth, interrupting any of us, Mrs Hopkins or Mrs Innes will have to take you outside. I might as well go out. See you in a minute, Jake. And you want to see me for the rest of the day, so I'm going home now. He did that, he did that yesterday. Don't push ma'am out of the way. No child likes to be told off, no child likes to be in trouble. Um, I firmly believe that. So we give them strategies in order to deal with problems that they would um, usually lash out at and give them other strategies that help them keep calm or work through a phase where they're feeling very stressed and would usually lash out, throw tables, throw chairs or run out of school. If you're angry with one person, yeah, we can sort that out. If you're angry with everybody and you won't talk to anybody, we can't really help you, can we? Do you agree? Okay. Do you agree with me? You don't agree with me? I'm not talking. What I want you to do, take these pencils, and if you want, you can bunch them all together and have a bit of fun. You see what I'm doing? Yeah? You hold them like this. Yeah? And you can just draw what you like. I want you to draw how you feel using those pencils. Quite good fun. 
see what, happens, what happens. You don't even have to think about it. You just hold the pencils. Yeah? Then as you want, and you just draw what you feel like drawing. Yeah, I'll do one. Just do it. How does it feel? So they all fall down. And then grip them tightly, and you just show me. I'll hold the paper for you. You just do whatever you get comes into your head. You keep doing that. And keep going, keep going, keep going. Now that you're distracted, okay, and you're doing something else, you look much better and you're smiling. Well, the biggest thing I do, and I can't tell you how I do it, is get their trust. Yeah. So what I'm trying to tell you is that we can do things that will help you. You do not have to be angry like this. And you're much, much happier when you're not angry. Aren't you? Yeah. The LSAs develop close bonds with the children and are an essential part of the nurturing environment that allows them to develop both emotionally and academically. And I'm asking you to come and sit down. You know the strategies that we have. You, you understand the rules. Ow! Ow! Damn! You understand the rules. Come on. No thanks. Thank you. No thank you. We're trying to encourage Chris to take part in this drama lesson. He's ostracised himself, he's isolating himself, so we're trying to encourage him to join in and be part of the group. I'll give you a moment to think about it. But you do know. I'll give you a moment. The LSAs follow the children all the time. They can actually um, have a stronger bond with them than the teacher because um, they are with them all the time. Checkmate. Oh, game over. Game oh. over. Yes. Is this year seven of War of the World? Well like done. Norman's facing oh, Harold. Just the first time you've won. Well done. It gives me great joy when I see a child turn round. Uh, Matthew in our class, when he first came in, wouldn't speak to anybody, was quite grumpy a lot of the time and was prone to quite alarming outbursts. There have, have been incidents of him throwing chairs and lashing out at children. Well, now he is transformed. You see this child who has in the past had speech difficulties, hands up, can't wait to answer the it's questions. About, it's about a thousand miles. Four hundred. When we assess children, we are not just looking at what level they are. We are not trying to push these kids towards level three or four. The real success for us with Children in the Achievement Group is if at the end of the day, they come out happier, confident, well-behaved, well-adjusted people who will have a handle on life and be able to deal with day-to-day -day problems, then we know we've succeeded.